Welcome back to uh, Bloodstock TV. We are sitting here with Giant from Bloody Wood, who just destroyed the main stage, I would say. I went up there. <laughs> that, I could just see dust thinking. clouds. I could see circle pits. I could see all sorts of stuff going on. Circle pit scared me, actually. Like, it's too hot for a circle pit. <laughs> but listen, this is your first experience at Bloodstock, so yep. tell us, you know, the adrenaline is obviously, you're leveling off in it now. How was it for you? For us, so I'll start from the beginning of the day because everyone I met, they were like, oh, we're looking forward to it. I suppose, you. yeah, your first overall impression of yep. the festival. Yeah. So, like, I said this on stage as well because we were, we were supposed to play uh, in 2020. We were headlining the Sophie Lancaster stage and we were really looking forward to it. And then COVID happened and we were heartbroken because probably we would have been the first Indian band to uh, headline something like this. Yeah. Probably, I'm not sure, but yeah. at least for us, it, it's going to be a first. And we were heartbroken and then again it happened in 21 as well and I was like and then 22 rolled in and uh, till then they were like oh we're bumping you off into the main stage and I was like oh but we were headlining yeah and then it, uh, they were like you know what you you guys do it and then I was like oh now I realize the pressure because today I met everyone was like we're looking forward for your set and I was like no pressure there <laughs> absolutely yeah. we just had a show in London we haven't slept properly but who cares <laughs> now we are we got and that's the thing, like the amount of love we got, it has to be like. And, and did you say you just had a show in London? Yep, yesterday. <clears throat> and how was that? Oh, it was amazing. It was a small, small room, the Boston Music Room. Sure. Uh, it was sold out show, and yep, you could you could smell everyone's sweat, including ours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just going back, you, I mean, there were so many things that you had to push back over the last few years. Yep. You know? Um Would it be right to say that now you guys are claiming back? What you missed out on, you're not wasting any time, you're just jumping into everything. Oh, in oh, force. oh, yes, oh, yes. We've been waiting, we've been dying to do this. We've been dying to get on stage and just do what we do. We were just discussing saying that uh, you missed out on a lot of things, so you were, you're diving into everything that you possibly can. Yep. So, like I was saying, that for us, it's we had to get on stage for the people who listen to us, who message us every day, like, when they're standing out there, they need to have the best time ever with us because it's like a symbiotic relationship where they, they feed off of our energy, but we're feeding off of theirs. That's the real thing. That's yeah. like, a, I was just saying to someone, that's a drug you cannot buy. When people, when people, you need that. Once yeah. you get a taste of that, you need that. It's and hard yeah. to go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so I was just looking back on, on kind of the origin of the band and I mean it was it, yeah. it originally started out as just kind of you guys messing around, it was yep. kind of a couple of parody tracks and whatnot. At what point did you actually kind of feel, oh my god, this is this is kind of a you know, we need to this is not kind of a joke anymore. We we've actually got something pretty serious on our so hands. This one this is this one thing everyone gets wrong because I, I think we've said it uh, a lot of times that we actually uh, did the parody so we could have eyeballs. So we were like, hey, we want to release original music, but who's going to listen to a band from India? Yeah. Even the people from India won't listen. It's just, you just upload one day on uh, on YouTube and YouTube. be like, oh, now we're going to be famous. No, that that's not how it works, right? So the covers, the first few covers, I'll say first two or three covers uh, and the parodies and the renditions that we did were fun. But when that's when we realized, you know what, we should make sure that it's a real thing so that's why we dropped a whole bunch of them so that we have a stable supporter base where we're like okay fine if we drop original music at least 5,000 people are gonna see it 2,000 sure. will see it yep yeah now I'm not sure if many people just know how much goodness that you guys do how much work you do for certain organizations behind the scenes um, giving to certain charities and stuff like that. I mean, the Hope Therapy, um, yep. which is, um, I believe, combats mental illness and yep, yep, yep. depression and NGO for, for homelessness. Um, there are not as many artists that are so hands-on when it comes to things like this. And I mean, was this always, when you guys realized that this was actually becoming into a greater, bigger interest, was there kind of a decision made to say, look, we need to give back, you know? We need to give back. That That's the feeling that we do hold. Because uh, we've been there too, you know. Be it, be it from a loss of a loved one to like literally yeah. going through mental illness. We've been there. And when we wrote about that, the, the next question was, you're singing about it. But what's next? What are we going to do? So 
This started off with GB Day when uh, we had, I think, I don't know, we had 60,000 Indian rupees in total. Yeah. That was all we had. And Karan came up with this idea. He's like, you know what? Uh, what I'm, what we're gonna do? We're gonna buy all these uh, counseling sessions. I'm gonna talk to an NGO. People can anonymously do this. Yeah. We bought it. We go, gave the code. People used it, and then it turned into a snowball effect where people were like, you know what? I wanna pay for the next person. So it went down for like a whole bunch of months, and people were still using those, even though the original 60 were done in like three days. But people kept like there was. I remember a few guys who were like, "Hey, I I, I want to donate five hundred dollars to it. I want to donate this much." We're like, "You talk it's to incredible. them. You talk to the NGO directly." And it went on for a whole bunch of months. Like we got messages, "Hey, I used that code," and I was like, "How? It was just sixty. It's more than I don't know how many people." But that's when we realized, "Oh, that's what's happening." It's absolutely amazing. I mean. Yeah. And I'm sure this is going to carry on, and I mean, you're involved in it now. I mean, so we things. try our best. Yeah. We, we certainly do. You do more than most. I mean, anything is, is something, you know? I, so There's a reason we don't compare, because we do not know what other people go through. But what, what, when we have a capability to do something, yeah. we make sure we do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, just seeing as we're just changing the subject, because yeah. we're running out of time. And yeah. We are at Bloodstock Festival, and I was looking at, I mean, there are some great festivals in, in India. Um, there's Bangalore. Metal Fest, yeah, the Bangalore, um, Independence yeah. Rock Festival in Mumbai. Yep. Do you see? Uh, I mean, there's always been an interest from, as far as I can remember, reading about. There's always been a strong interest in India, but is it growing over there? The interest for kind of heavier music. Oh yes, absolutely. So yeah. we've always said this because that's how it is. Like the Indian metal community is small but tight knit. But recently, what I've seen is that there's a whole bunch of. It doesn't. Just, not just uh, metal, but like the indie scene in general, it's growing. People have started appreciating the yeah. independent side, not just Bollywood or just like regional music, but they've started exploring these options. Yeah. Even we, as a, the band, we, we've met a few people in India who just recognize us and we see them and they're like the regular Indian people, they're not, they do not look like a metalhead. Yeah. And they come up to us and they're like, hey, we love your music. And we, I'm like, yep, it's, it's growing for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, and just tell me this as well, like since obviously with, with everything being on kind of ice for the last couple of years, not being able to do anything, um, the album, debut album, yes. finally uh, uh, here, on our, yep. uh, like there has been that period of, uh, you know, has there been a creative period? Is there new music there? And if so, how much? Oh, creative period for the, uh, something new? Yeah. Like are you, not, are you guys continuing? Not a whole bunch, honestly, because uh, when we go on tour, we need to make sure that at least two months, we we practice every day for six hours. Mm -hmm. So there's no scope for, like there's no creative space because you're already right. tired. Yeah. But we have a whole bunch of things planned already. We are going to start working on them as soon as we're done with this side of the tour. So so just looking forward then. So that would be kind of we're going into 2023. Yeah, 23 is the tour that was supposed to be March 22. Oh, okay. It was the album launch you, tour, yeah. yeah. So once that's done, yeah. we'll be heading over to the next phase. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then just finally, like being over here and, and being around all these bands, there's so yeah. much happening on all the different stages here. Yep. Have you been out? Have you had a kind of a look around? And oh, absolutely not, but I'm going to do that. Did you say you, absolutely not, not yet. No, no. not, we haven't seen, right. so we performed and we immediately came here. So you're kind of looking first. at her kind of Oh, I am. I, that's what I told you. Like, I am there, the artist area, and right there, that, there's Rob Lynn going, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Like, I saw Nergal just walking around in flip-flops. I was like, I've got Crocs, we can be friends, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And come here, just like in terms of yeah. who you're seeing this weekend, is there anyone that you, like, bloody would, would love to hook up with for, um, would you like to, who would you like to tour with, if you could, if you could... Whoever takes us, man, we love know, playing. Like, if it was a wish list. Yeah. Wish list would be Slipknot for sure. Really? My my favorite. Yeah, Slipknot, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I you know uh, you know um, the uh, vendor. Are vendor. Yep. Are yep. you sticking around? Are you here? I am sticking around. I w I would like to say hi. Yeah. But but I don't want to be, be like that fanboy as well. Well, you know. What am I gonna say? Oh, your father is the reason I'm singing. Well, hell yeah, I am. Yeah. Your father is the singing is the reason you're also singing. I mean, he's your father. Well, if you're yeah. watching this, Vendor, expect. Ah. Uh, an introduction and a hello. Oh, and I love your music. I keep saying tomorrow, but today's Friday. That's yep. Sunday. They're playing on Sunday. Yep. Anyway, okay. Well, listen, it was uh, just an immense pleasure to have you guys finally, oh. after so long, here. 
two many years. Events. We waited yeah. two years to be well, here. Well, hopefully, it's, uh, we'll, we'll see you back uh, sooner rather than later. Yep, it's and on you guys. I mean, <laughs> no kidding. It's happening for uh, Bloody What's Up. Please keep an eye out. Um, check out their stuff online, yeah. um, socials, all that stuff. Buy their merch. It, they guys do great things with the, with the, the funds, uh, giving it to great organizations. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much thank for you your so time. Much. Thank you so Amazing. much for yours.